Today I would like to focus on the issue of death because many people celebrate their birthday and see birthday as a sign of something auspicious and when death comes they cry, they feel sorrowful, they feel very inauspicious but actually death and birth comes together. There is no birth without death. So therefore, we understand that it is actually one coin, two sides. Two sides of one coin. So we should also treat death as something natural, as the way we maybe we will, will not be so joyful uh, facing death, but at least we should not be negating ourselves from understanding death. My way of explaining death is this. If you break down the word death, D-E-A-T-H, death. The first one, D is for definite. It is definite that all of us will die. There is not yet, yet any exception in the past that someone has exception not to die. So it is definite. So when it is definite, we have to understand death in a more friendly way, so to say. E, E stands for equality. This is one thing that a beggar is equal to the king. And nobody can escape this. Equality is for everyone. Actually, I feel quite good, you know, being equal to everyone. A, A is for afraid. Afraid because we don't know the real nature of death. We don't know the real nature of life. We don't know the real nature of birth. And in between birth and death, you have life. So therefore, we have to spend our life in a meaningful way, in a more meaningful way than the way we are doing now. The next one is T. T is for time. Really, we don't know when we are going to die. And because we don't know when we are going to die, we have to behave as though today we are going to die. And by doing that, you are actually bringing your best to present to the world, to present to the people around you. H for how. How are we going to die? Nobody knows. Nobody wants to die in accident, but people die in accident. And when you die in accident, uh, when, once His Holiness explained like this, I think it's very interesting. If you die immediately when you, ha when you come into this accident, actually the mind is neutral, neutral. And therefore you could go according to your previous karma that will take you. But if you die with hatred, that is for sure. That is for sure that you will die a difficult death. Very interesting way of understanding it. So how we die, we don't know. So therefore, we always have to live this moment fully, fully. The practice of meditation in, in Buddhism is called mindfulness. Sati means mindfulness. I think it's a very interesting word. The mind is full here and now. That's why it is mindfulness. So therefore, if we understand this in a positive way, every day, it's your best day. Every day is our be best day. So here in our monastery, a monastery of all the bhikkhunis, of all the female sangha, what I usually remind my, my sangha is that when we get up in the morning, be thankful, be thankful. People said, what for? You have not received anything yet. Why should we be thankful? Be thankful because we have today. When we wake up in the morning, Nobody knows for sure that we are going to wake up in the morning. And when we wake up fully, having all these physical parts intact, be grateful for that. Be grateful for that. Don't take it for granted that we are going to get up every morning and be this alert, be this fully aware of things around us. We don't know. So therefore, today when I wake up, I feel grateful. I feel thankful for this life that I have. And I made a determination that today I will keep my mind, my speech, my action the best. In Pali, it's, it's called kusala gamma. Kusala means wholesome. So if we keep our mind, mental formation, our speech, and our action, wholesome. 
towards the end of the day, let's check, let's have self-evaluation whether or not we have actually succeeded in what we intended in the morning. That is a very good self-reflection. And nobody else can do that but you yourself. Nobody else can do that for me but I myself. And I have to be truthful whether I have actually failed. There are certain moments that I fail. I scolded this person a bit too much, you know. I added my anger into that scolding. I feel sorrowful. I feel sorry. And I should ask that person for forgiveness for actually having scolded her a bit too much than what she expected. So together with this mindfulness, there is always self-evaluation, self-reflection, and always improvement. So this is our mental, mental, how to say, training, our mental training that any one of us, any one of us can actually do. And every one of us will benefit from this path of self-reflection, self-evaluation, self self-transformation. So let us, as Buddhists, be true Buddhists towards this process of self-transformation. Thank you.